Let's get to the SEC. What's the biggest question in the SEC? The biggest question in the SEC is, can anybody beat Georgia? They have been totally dominant in the SEC. Totally dominant. Only one loss in the last couple of years. That was Alabama in the SEC championship game. And while they lose their quarterback and offensive coordinator, I, to me, I'm unconcerned with that because they were never a quarterback-centric or offensive-centric team. I said that last week when talking about why they were number one. This is a roster that's unbelievable. They're 17-1 and one in their last 18 games in the conference. Okay? Only one of those 17 wins was within 10 points in terms of a margin, and that was the win at Missouri last year by four. Obviously, the one loss, Alabama in the SEC championship game. I get it. They've got a new QB, and you, you could make an argument like, hey, Bennett was 29-3 and three as a starter. Again, I'm not concerned. Whoever is the quarterback for Georgia is going to be fine. They've been vetted by Kirby Smart. I think all of that suggests that they're going to be a team that is on par with the level that they've played at the last couple of years. Seven straight top five recruiting classes and the only team with a top five scoring offense and scoring defense last year. Plus, oh, by the way, the schedule is embarrassingly easy. Very easy. Not a knock on the SEC, not a knock on Georgia. It just happened to, to play out this way. They were supposed to go to Norman and play Oklahoma. That game goes away because Oklahoma won't reciprocate next year, obviously being in the SEC and being a conference team against them. So that game goes away. They replace it with some cake game. And here we are. They are not going to be threatened at all. They're not going to be threatened until they go to Neyland November, what is it, 11th? Which, by the way, that trip to Tennessee, November 11th, is going to be their, th their third true road game of the season. That's it. They go on the road to a true road game twice before November 11th. That is wild. By the way, that speaks to the brokenness of how schedules are built in college football. You're telling me the back-to-back -back defending national champion has a schedule that you could argue is one of the easiest schedules in all of college football. That should not be how this shakes out. Not their fault, not the SEC's fault. It just kind of happened that way. Oh, we got to change how schedules are made. Biggest questions for me about Georgia. Complacency, distraction. We've seen the offseason issues. Will that become a distraction? We'll wait and see. Complacency. Will it set in? Doubt it. Doubt it. Why will complacency not set in at Georgia? Competition. Well, you just told me, Joel, their schedule is the easiest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not competition from opponents. Competition from within. When you recruit at the level that Georgia has recruited, these guys have got to be so hungry and have such a sense of urgency on a day-to-day -day basis just to be a starter. That's how you fight complacency. That's how Alabama has fought complacency. That's how USC fought complacency during their dynasty. And that's how Georgia is going to fight their complacency. So who's, who are the teams that could potentially knock off Georgia and the SEC. I think it's only three, maybe like two and a half. Sorry, Tennessee. Tennessee gets like a half a nod because they're in their own division. You got to start with Alabama. They're being doubted. That's a scary place to be. Doubting Nick Saban is not how you make money in this industry. Nick Saban has recruited as well as anybody. They've got nine five stars just from last year's class alone. Nine out of what was it? 39. That's ridiculous. This, this is going to be a deep team that should be very good defensively. I think they're going to be a hungry team. I like the culture of that team. I think this is a team that could overachieve. The question mark for me is going to be about quarterback and wide receiver. They've got to replace Bryce Young, who single-handedly kept them in and won some games a year ago. And they've got a wide, re wide receiver core that I would say came up short a year ago. This is not a wide receiver core I believe a lot in. And at times, what we've seen at the top end of the sport, and Nick Saban knows this, is that you've got to go out there and outscore an opponent. The reason why they were so competitive and beat Georgia in the SEC championship game and then they were in that game and, and kind of beating them in the national championship game was their ability to throw the ball. Remember Jameson Williams? He went down. That's when all of a sudden, oh, you can beat Georgia. Remember when Georgia was about to get beat by Ohio State and then Marvin Harrison goes down? It's like, oh, okay, then Georgia beats you. You've got to have elite wide receivers in order to beat this Georgia team. You've got to have an elite passing game. I don't know if Alabama is going to have that this year. That's just a question that you've got to – 
Keep in the back of your mind. Tennessee, they have the offense. They throw it well. They were the best offense in college football. But remember how simple it is. Quarterback wide receiver centric. Downfield read routes. They're also replacing their quarterback, best wide receiver. That's difficult to do. If the Orange Bowl showed us anything, it's that they've got some potential. Joe Milton, uh, Squirrel, best name in college football. They've got some potential on that side. Do I believe they can beat Georgia? Not really. Is it going to help that they're in their home stadium? Yes, absolutely. Now we come to the team that I actually think I'm like, this is a team that actually could beat Georgia. That's LSU. LSU has depth. They've, they've now gone through a season and transitioned to Brian Kelly. They were number two in the transfer portal, mostly on the defensive side. They've got their quarterback back, who's played a lot of football. They've got wide receivers on the outside. Remember, they threw it for, geez, 500 yards in that SEC championship game. And I, I get it. Like, I get it. Georgia was up handily, and LSU was just pitching it around a lot. But they've got experience at quarterback. They've got experience at wide receiver. Their defense should be better. Brian Kelly is a very good football coach. That's a team I would be leery of. I think LSU's got some serious potential. I think they beat Florida State early, and then, and then we see what this team can develop into as the season goes along. That's my SEC questions. Thank you for watching the Joel Class Show YouTube channel. And if you like this clip, make sure to like it and subscribe to the channel. And you can stay up to date on all of my college football coverage.